Kings fans. I'm your host of Kingscoop.com, Malcolm Means. I'm over here with the legend, Paul Hale, <laughs> Ruthie Bolt. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. It's a great day. It's, it's definitely a great day. We got a chance to get out there and hang out with Ruthie on the, on the basketball court. We're trying to make half-court shots. <laughs> I made my first, but, you know, she came man, to second on that one. Put what's on the line. Big <laughs> feet, <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky. It wasn't yeah. nice. I got lucky on making those shots. But um, again, we, you know, I love Sacramento. I love the Sacramento Kings. Everyone knows my brother Harold Presley played for the Kings. And every time I used to come on out here, after he he was done playing, we would always watch WNBA in the summertime. Yes. And you would always be on the court doing your thing, shaking somebody down, shaking up the New York Liberty, somebody, put, them somebody, them somebody, down. put the clamps on them, and, and that's I kind of. Kind of molded my, my defensive pattern after you and Mitch Richmond because I used to get down and force them low. Yep. Uh -huh. Give me that and look at them crazy after steal the play. Uh -huh. like, uh, ah, yeah. Maybe come back on defense. That's, like that. Man. That's a great feeling, man. That's a feeling. That's right. Awesome feeling. So talk about yourself right now. What's going on in your lifetime right now? I know you've got some children. Yeah, I got my mom, definitely four year old, two year old. They keep me busy. Man, when the Olympics a lot easier than raising these kids, man. I'm telling you, it's a lot. But it's a, it's a good challenge. I love it to me. You know, being able to experience motherhood has been the, um, the most amazing thing in my life, and um, and I love it. I love the you know the challenge, but um, but what I'm doing now, you know, I have to obviously I've been mentoring young people, and I have to be role models for my for my kids. But um, but what is the most rewarding thing I've done, you know, other than have my kids in the last year and a half, is finish writing this book, The Ride of a Lifetime, and it talks about my life story. It's about the making of my Ruthie and. To make the mighty Ruthie is not an arrogant statement, but it's just saying everything I had to do, I had to work hard for, right. and I feel like I, I've done some mighty things. But I'm not me mighty, but just my journey's been mighty, and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for the challenges, and so it really feels good to be able to, you know, uh, to be able to share and empower young know, people. And just anybody, I, I, a lot of parents have bought this for their kids, and they actually read it first. Like, man, I want to read it first. They enjoy it. So a lot of times they read it together. Right. But it's about just sharing my story. Let kids know that. I didn't just wake up and was a two time Olympia and Hall of Fame, like I had a car smash everything. Right. Nothing would happen to me. And there was so many times in my journey I could have walked away, I could have quit. So you know what it's not for me. But I found value, I found, you know, meaning and and doing it and right. doing the process and doing the process and hanging in there. So so I want kids to know that, you know what, it doesn't matter. Don't quit, don't be so easy to walk away from your dreams. Right. It's something that you really want to do. Fight, you know, persevere if you fall down and get back up. So we'll try it again, but just don't quit and walk away. So, so, so go ahead, just uh, keep explaining um, the, the journey and the process, just of, uh, you know, how, uh, talk about that experience of how you kind of fell and, and picked it's, yourself up. Can you, it just, can you to me, it's, it's so, I, I, I do my best to try to paint a picture of, of my journey, of the process, of moments, you know, that I felt like, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I wasn't good enough on discouraging moments or, because it's, it's a tough place to be, to feel dejected, rejected, and say you're not good enough. And, and because that's the natural feeling to feel. And then everybody say, go down that road, let's travel, which is a scary place to go. But my father met me at that crossroad and encouraged me, saying, keep your faith, keep working hard, keep your attitude. That's all, it's just that simple. Right. And he would always say, I'm like, Dad, is it that, that simple? He said, yes. So he, Embrace, help me embrace my challenges, and so when I got over one hurdle, it made getting over the other hurdle a lot easier. And so I just look back on my journey, like man, I could have quit then, or I could have quit then when the national team didn't invite me to the Olympics. I paid my own way to go. Or I could have quit then when I told my ACL people that I'd never play again. I could have quit. So so many times I could have quit and given up, but I just I feel compelled to share with young people, with grown ups, and whomever that whatever you embrace and want to do, don't give up. If you decide that it's just not meant for you, okay. But don't stop because based on circumstances or what people say, what people perceive. And people are not meaning harm by saying you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. They just may be what they see, but you got to know that it's what's inside that counts. That you got to be able to tap into that. So that's what this book talks about, the make of the Ruthie, how my life and my journey, uh, how I became an Olympian, that it wasn't overnight, that it took a lot of perseverance, a lot of drive. I had to really soar and spread my wings. And it was tough, but, but, I'm, but I'm glad because it made me a stronger person and it gave me tough skin and it gave me a story. There you go. Mm -hmm. So talk about that knee injury. And, and I, I had a knee injury as well. I had uh, my meniscus worked on and uh, it took me about a year to kind of really get back on my feet. And I love playing basketball still. And obviously not as well as you, but um, 
getting back on there and trying to do that at a professional level. Talk about how difficult or possibly how long that kind of got. Yeah, it was, it was tough. You know, at that point, I was 31, and that was considered old in basketball to be the Terry ACL. Right. And this was our after the World Championship. We was on cloud nine. We had, I was. We had just beaten the Russians, and I hit two big threes down the stretch. I'm talking about that feeling just oh, man, it's, it was like it was just as of yesterday, and it was in 98 when I hit those two big shots and we ended up with beating the Russians. I was just, to me, that felt almost as good as the Olympics. But anyway, being excited, being on cloud nine and having won, and I would have, I didn't sleep for three or four days and, and go to the WNBA. And I feel the game of the season um, when I went into, went into the game in Detroit. I tore my ACL. I like, man, that was devastating to be so high and then drop so low. And, and I almost just, you know what, you know, maybe this is my career and maybe I was supposed to. You know, that was the only last thing for me to win. But I was still wanting something else. I feel like it wasn't enough. So I just, and I was contemplating retiring, but it was in the paper that I, I would never get back to be the athlete that I was and that I was too old and rusty to be, to, to be effective again on the court. Did somebody in Sacramento? Somebody said it in yeah. Sacramento. Who? Who? We're not going to say who. I ain't gonna say We're going to say who. We know who you are. Yeah. And it was always said she's old and rusty. So, oh my God, I'm like, are you serious? Okay, I got something for that. So I started working out twice a day. I was going swimming in the evening time, I was doing my therapy in the morning, and I was determined. That just motivated me. They gave me fuel. Like, you don't get an enemy with premonition. Mm -hmm. Or you don't give a, you, you, you don't fuel it, you know, not such an end, but you don't, when you say things like that, it should motivate. Some people may, it may stress some people out, deflate it may deflate yeah. them, but it, it, it just, it just motivates me and empowers me to just, you know, to work harder. So I did, and I got back on the court, um, and like, Six eight months, I, um, I I missed the whole WNBA season, but I I was able to play with the national team the following summer, in which I uh, I made the WNBA All Star team the following year. So wait, so you were tore your ACL and then came back after the season in six to eight months? Yeah, and I tore more than my ACL. Matter of fact, Dr. Eric Hyden, he was my surgeon. He's a five time gold medalist in speed skating. Okay. And he knows the level of you know, the level of athlete that I was, and he knew. That my strength and my desire, but he even said, not being there, he even said that it's going to be tough to come back from this injury. He said, even the top 100 athletes in the world, I want to be able to make it back from this injury. He goes, that's my feet were here, just destroyed. So we're talking about Adrian Peterson, Robert Griffin III, those people. <laughs> Three people I know. That's the only yeah. ones that I know coming back from ACL in six to eight months. Me, I was a year and I was still. Hobbling and limping around. Yeah. So, so we, I came up. back and made the Olympic team again, and, and just I really just that drive and that inner, inner strength. So that's what I want to compel to people right, about right, that right. inner strength. You'll be amazed at the inner strength if you tap into that. And if you if you see value, you have to see value in going this and going the extra mile. Okay. And you always go the extra mile. I called you up to come over here and uh, help out with Jason Thompson's basketball camp and find out if she would actually speak here. And there were some things that I found out, and I'm just like so motivated right now. I want to go out and play right now and better my life right now. Jeez. But, you know, she's just an inspiration, and you always give back to the kids. And I just wanted to say thank you for that uh, and, and just going out there and just really blessing these kids Definitely. right now. Definitely. So, again, where can these people uh, find your book? They can, um, I'm going to give my purpose and information. Um, actually, you have a website? I do. This is going to be on kingscoop.com. How about that? We will have a link for you guys for that. Kingscoop.com will actually have a book of Ruthie's. Uh, I'm giving the name of that one more time. This is my copy. The Ride yeah. of a Lifetime. The Ride of a Lifetime. Ride I'm getting lifetime. this book. You enjoy. I'm going to be reading that this weekend. I'm going to be, be uh, tweeting all about that after I yes. finish out. And uh, you're going to see a difference in me. I'm changing from flabby to, <laughs> to getting guns like this. You see this woman's guns? This woman is fit. Fit. I'm telling you my age. I'm 37. I'm 37. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. I'm representing the 40 year olds. Looking good. There you go. You sound like your brother. You sound like him. It's just like him. She knows my brother. But anyhow, this is it from kingscoop.com. I want to say thank you, Ruth, for coming out and uh, telling us about your story. And make sure you pick up her book. It'll be on our website over the weekend. Uh, Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at uh, realkingscoop.com.